What you are about to watch is more than a simple build video. This is the short, clear, and complete journey behind the Liberty Engine 2.0, a motor designed to run using its own self-generated energy through magnetic induction. In this video, you will see exactly how the engine is made, tested, adjusted, and improved over months of work. You will see the coils, the rotor, the magnets, the frame, and the tests that prove how the system behaves under real conditions. If you enjoy bold experiments, creative engineering, and unusual ideas, stay with us until the very end, because nothing is hidden. Building the core components, the Liberty Engine 2.0 begins with something familiar, a standard microwave transformer. These transformers are easy to find and hold coils that can be reused for completely new purposes. We carefully remove all unnecessary parts and keep only the coil we need. This coil becomes the first of four main coils in the engine. To build the full set, we repeat the same process with three other identical microwave transformers. When all four coils match in size, shape, and configuration, the structure becomes balanced from the outset. These coils form the foundation of the whole system, so every step must be slow and precise. With the coils complete, we move to the most important piece, the rotor. The rotor must be strong, stable, light, and efficient. We manufacture it using a special alloy made mostly of aluminum and silver. This specific mix matters. Aluminum offers speed and low weight, while silver reduces electrical resistance and improves stability. More importantly, this combination helps eliminate eddy currents, which are small but wasteful currents that usually reduce efficiency in motors like this. Removing them helps us achieve faster rotation and cleaner energy transfer. Now we place the N52 neodymium magnets onto the rotor. These magnets are extremely powerful and essential for generating the magnetic field that produces electricity in the coils. We glue them in place with strong epoxy adhesive to make sure they never move or shift at high speed. Then we fill the remaining space with epoxy resin, giving each slot on the rotor a solid, sealed structure. This prevents vibration, cracking or imbalance during rotation. Once complete, we let the rotor cure for 24 hours. After drying, every slot is sealed, smooth and strong enough to handle constant rotation at more than 1,400 revolutions per minute. The combined structure of the alloy, the magnets and the resin gives us a rotor designed for long-term stability. Every step in this stage helps create a system that can feed itself through induction once it starts moving. As simple as it seems, this is the true beginning of a self-running motor, designing and centering the frame. Now that the coils and rotor are ready, we begin building the frame. The frame holds every part in place and ensures the engine stays balanced. A motor like this cannot afford the slightest misalignment. Even one millimeter off can reduce efficiency increase vibration, or cause the rotor to touch the coils. To avoid all this, we design two identical pieces that will form the final structure. They must be cut smoothly and assembled with great care. Once the frame pieces are ready, we begin positioning the rotor between the four coils. This part requires patience. Magnetic fields must interact at equal distances. The rotor must sit perfectly centered. If not, the whole system will suffer from noise and instability. After several measurements and adjustments, we add exactly one millimeter of thickness to correct the position. This final adjustment brings the rotor into the perfect center. Now we prepare for the first functional test. To show full transparency, we leave the engine completely open. You can see every piece, every wire, and every moving part. Nothing is hidden. We connect two coils in parallel. We also connect the motor in parallel, so everything works together. We tape all wires far from the rotor so they do not get caught during rotation. Later, we will protect the rotor with a methacrylate cover. But for now, we want everything exposed so you can see the truth. Before starting the test, we show that there is no voltage anywhere. There are no secret batteries, no internal power sources, and no hidden electronics. To spin the rotor for the first time, we use a simple cable, just like we did with the first Liberty Engine prototype. This temporary starter system works, but we will improve it in the final version. 
When we pull the cable, the rotor begins to spin. Once it reaches enough speed, magnetic induction begins inside the coils. Voltage appears. The motor receives that voltage and keeps spinning. This is the moment when everything works or fails. And it works. The motor feeds itself. The rotation becomes stable. The engine enters a continuous loop. Seeing this moment for the first time is exciting. Even after months of preparation and careful construction, enhancing power, stability, and overall efficiency. The Liberty Engine 2.0 is not new. It is the result of over seven months of intense work and hundreds of adjustments learned from the original Liberty Engine 1.0. Each step, each failure, and each comment from viewers helped shape this improved design. The new engine is more powerful, stable, and quieter. One major improvement comes from the new rotor alloy. The aluminum-silver combination eliminates eddy currents and allows faster rotation with less resistance. This efficiency boost creates more power and reduces heat. Another improvement comes from removing the belt and pulley system used in the first model. Those parts added friction and noise. Eliminating them results in a cleaner, smoother energy flow. To prove the motor is feeding properly, we connect a simple light bulb. When the motor runs, the bulb lights instantly. When we disconnect the starter cable, the motor stops, showing again that the engine does not store energy. Power only comes from magnetic induction. For transparency, we open the frame completely and show that there are no hidden batteries. The LED lights use a standard 220 volt driver. The outlets are empty inside with nothing unusual. Every demonstration is open because showing the truth matters. With the new design, the engine reaches a stable 1,400 revolutions per minute. At this speed, it produces around 230 volts AC. The improved structure allows the system to reach a peak of 20,000 watts under maximum conditions. These numbers show how much progress has been made and how far the system has come since the first version. Final structure and internal mechanics explained. With the tests complete, we finish the assembly. The Liberty Engine 2.0 now uses a manual pull start system, similar to starting a small generator. When we pull the handle, the rotor begins spinning. Neodymium magnets pass microwave transformer coils, creating voltage. That voltage enters the outlets and also returns to the motor. As long as the rotor keeps moving, the coils keep generating power. This forms a continuous loop that holds a constant speed, near 1,400 revolutions per minute. Because the rotor is made from a special alloy, energy losses stay low. The motor wastes little power through heat, resistance, or friction. The frame holds all four coils in perfect alignment. There is no belt, no pulley, no contact friction. The rotor floats only on its bearings, letting the system run smoothly. These small changes combine to create a motor that performs far better than the Liberty Engine 1.0. Once complete, it becomes the strongest and most stable version we have built so far. Full outdoor demonstration. To prove the engine under real conditions, we take it outside, far from any building, or power line, or electrical source. Only the Liberty Engine 2.0 sits on the ground in an open nature. We bring several tools for testing an iMac 27-inch computer, a grinder, a drill, and a water pump. We begin the test. The engine starts. The rotor stabilizes. The RPM stays near 1400. We connect the iMac. It turns on. We connect the grinder. It spins at full force. We connect the drill. It works smoothly. We connect the water pump. It runs without slowing the motor. Each tool draws power directly from the engine. Nothing changes in the rotation. No vibration increases. No voltage drops. The outdoor test proves that the Liberty Engine 2.0 can work outside the workshop with real tools, real loads, and real conditions. Many viewers asked for an unedited version of this test. If you want to see it, comment below, and we will publish it. The Liberty Engine 2.0 is ready for longer tests, stronger loads, and future upgrades. You have just seen how the Liberty Engine 2.0 is built, tested, and proven. This project took months of effort, patience, and countless adjustments. Today, you saw that the engine works with no hidden batteries, no tricks, 
and no secret parts. Every step was open and clear. If you want the unedited outdoor test, write it in the comments. If you enjoyed this project, remember to subscribe, leave a like, and share the video. Your support helps us continue exploring new ideas, improving this design, and building even more powerful versions in the future.